I grew up pretty much glued to a TV when I was little, so it's kind of surprising today I haven't owned one in years, but I mean, why would I need one? Times are different nowadays, it's not like I have cable, and on top of that I watch YouTube and stream my shows on my desktop or laptop. And I'm not super big into video games like I was when I was younger, but when I do want to play something, my Nintendo Switch literally has a built-in screen display. But yeah, I just have not really felt the need to own a TV that's just going to take up space and sit unused. But I always forget, I do technically own a TV, just not a modern one like a normal human being. Yeah, I'm one of those hipsters who likes impracticality, so I've been holding on to this 1985 Hitachi CRT TV for 4 years now. It's got a 13 inch screen and color display, and it's mini size markets the thing as portable, thus the little handle on the back. Ah yes, don't mind me while I just catch up on my shows in my car. It only weighs like 20 pounds. But for real, I bought this thing in my first apartment as more of just a little decoration, and since I've hauled it to now my third apartment, I got it off eBay and I was pretty surprised they were willing to ship the thing, but from what I remember the shipping did cost as much as the TV itself. And yeah, it was definitely meant to be more for aesthetics in my chill vibes college apartment next to my record player, retro games, vintage stereo, tape deck, records, and Back to the Future poster. As you can tell, I was a very cool person in college. Plus the other thing is I do have a strong nostalgia for old CRTs because I had a very similar one growing up. It had the same sort of wood grain and metal trim, and I'd spend my weekends playing Sonic 2 on my Sega Genesis, which, mind you, was already 10 years old by the time I was playing it. My parents weren't too interested in getting me the latest gaming setup at the time. But all that aside, this actual TV I have here, I haven't used in years, if I'm being honest. The first year I had it, I used it a little bit for shows and games, but since then it's been pretty much off. But let's change that. Let's see if you can practically use a 1985 CRT TV in 2021. So forget your dumb 4K displays, color accuracies, high gamer refresh rates, and let's go good old sweet fuzzy 480p like we got low Wi-Fi connection. I mean hey, at least it's a color TV. We're living in luxury, baby. Okay, before we even plug anything into the TV, I cannot ignore just how satisfying the TV itself is to use. I mean, this is part of why I like vintage stuff in the first place. Everything is so mechanical and responsive. You yank that on switch and the whole screen just dramatically flashes alive. It can take a few seconds if it's been off for a bit, but you still feel and hear it kick on. And changing channels is done with this huge dial that clunks into each notch with such weight. And if you're wondering what the other dial does, it's for if you have fancy cable and it's how you access other channels. Also, the volume is controlled by turning the on and off switch. Overall, the controls are a highlight alone and put modern day controls to shame. There's nothing I hate more than mushy buttons that I can't even tell if they're working or not. The only thing I don't like about my particular TV is the volume knob seems to be very hard to adjust at low volumes, like it'll cut in and out if you have it set too low, so you usually have to set it a bit louder than I'd like at sometimes. If I were to guess, it's probably just because the electronic contacts on the knob are a bit dusty from sitting, but I have no way to know for sure. But enough drooling over the knobs. Unless you're some weirdo, you don't buy a TV so you can turn dials while you stare at static all day. Let's plug something in. Now, what you ask? Well, when thinking of old TVs, the most logical thing that comes to mind is to plug an old video game in. I mean, that's probably one of the few relatively common things you'd find these days that still has an option for an RF plug. Um, that doesn't look right. I mean, obviously these TVs look bad compared to today, but this is way worse than it should be. Well, that's cause you gotta adjust the settings. Now, this isn't something you gotta do all the time, but again, it's been years since this has last been used, so I'm not surprised. Pretty much on the bottom here, you'll see some more wheels to control the image. There's one for saturation, color tint, brightness, and 
picture. I'm not really sure what that last one does, but it seems to affect the contrast. I know I keep prolonging actually using the TV for, you know, normal TV stuff, but again, I just really like how you can mess with this stuff. I mean, you can change settings like this on most modern displays too, but there's something about having it so easily accessible and quick to do that makes it fun. You can even make it black and white. Anyways, that looks good for now. I do have to note all the footage I have of the screen does look a lot better in person. Filming the screen gives a bit of an inaccurate representation, but there's not a real good way to show it better as far as I know. The main difference you'll see here is the really fine lines going across the screen which aren't noticeable in real life, and also some of the colors and just the brightness is a little off on the camera. And yeah, my Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo feel right at home on this TV. Honestly, it brings back quite a lot of memories growing up playing games like this. There's very much a distinct feel that it gives and I mean, this is literally how these games were meant to be played. The resolution isn't just low, but the quality is fuzzy too, which actually blurs a lot of the hard pixels together and makes it look a lot less pixel arty and more smoothed out. And no, this isn't just hipster BS, this is real. I'm sure there are some other Nintendo games that do similar things, but I know for a fact that a lot of the Sega Genesis games were designed to take advantage and exploit the limitations of the CRT screens they were made for. I won't go too far into the technical details of how this all works, but basically these old games were pretty limited on how many colors they could display at once, and also transparency wasn't a thing, so they came up with some tricks around it. Probably the most famous example is of the waterfall in Sonic 1. If you play the game on a modern screen like most people would nowadays, you see the true representation of how the waterfall is drawn. And yeah, it looks alright. If you look close, it's just a bunch of lines of blue shades, each line separated by a gap so you can see the background through it. But the programmers never intended for it to be viewed this way, because when the same image is displayed on a CRT with all the fuzziness, it blurs the lines and gaps together and makes this nice transparency effect that also has a shimmer to it. Also, obviously I'm filming a screen, it does look a bit better in real life. But still, that's pretty sick. Another example is with dithering. Dithering is similar to the gaps used in the waterfall, but basically it's when you use a pattern of different colored pixels to make a new color when they are blurred together. It's used for shading mainly. You can see this on the Sonic 2 and 3's title screens. Here on a modern display, it'll look like this. Looks decent, but you can clearly see they just crosshatch two colors, which comes out a bit jagged. But on the CRT, the mixture of colors are blurred and blended together to make a new color which otherwise couldn't exist with the technical limitations of the game. As someone who's made games on the side, this sort of stuff is always so cool to me, because of how limiting technology was back then, engineers and developers had to find super clever ways to use the shortcomings as advantages. And those are just graphical examples. There are tons of tricks like this done in the actual game design and coding of these old games too. I'm not saying it doesn't happen nowadays, but it's a lot less necessary as machines are able to handle way more than was even imaginable back then. Now, old games are fun and all, but unless you're some nerd, you're probably not playing 30-year-old games every day. So what if you actually want to watch something? Well, I don't have cable, and I don't own a VCR, unfortunately, so those are out of the question. But what if we wanted to get a bit more modern? How about streaming shows and videos to this TV that was made before the internet? Alright, this is when you start to cross the line from nostalgic hipster into straight up madman. Obviously you can't plug HDMI into this thing, I mean nothing on it is even digital, it's only got analog input. So you gotta get yourself one of these adapters that converts the digital signal into an analog one. Again, this isn't like a simple cord adapter, this has a chip in it that has to process and convert the feed. It even needs its own power supply too. 
It's still easy enough though, just hook everything up, use the remote to pick the right settings, and bam, the future is now. Now you can watch whatever you want on YouTube, Netflix, and Hulu, or you can plug in your Switch and play stuff too. Heck, you could even use this as a desktop monitor if you're really that insane. Though the idea of using a CRT for modern streaming does sound pretty cool and fun, you actually run into the opposite problem the retro video games had. While those were made to take advantage of the poor display quality, most modern sites, menus, and apps are really not designed to be displayed on such a low res and fuzzy screen, so most of the time small details are hard to make out and you can't actually read anything because all the small text is only legible with higher resolutions. You can zoom in on your browser and also adjust the scaling in your computer settings and they definitely are mandatory but even then they don't help that much or you'll have to zoom in a crazy amount. So often you're best off just setting things up on your laptop screen first then watching it on the TV. Even if you try to play modern games, you'll be mostly fine during gameplay but again, small text and icons can be absolutely impossible to make out so it really depends on the game you're playing. I guess it's worth noting that if you have a larger TV than this, then you probably will have an easier time, but the resolution will still be lower than it's meant to be. Once you actually do get your show and start watching though, the experience is a lot more enjoyable. It's pretty fun watching stuff on this little TV, especially older cartoons, but even new ones often feel right at home on it. Like, I really have no other way to describe it other than fun and charming to see. It's definitely a unique aesthetic that can't truly be replicated. You're just watching the same shows, but through a different filter of authentic retro vibes. Subtitles aren't too bad and perfectly readable, surprisingly. The only real couple annoyances are having to get up to adjust the volume and also the screen can be a bit washed out when in a bright room like my living room. Uh, it's definitely best viewed in darker settings. The one funny realization you do have at one point though is the fact that most laptop screens are actually the same size or larger than the TV screen itself, but let's just pretend we didn't see that. Now, admittedly, using this TV is pretty silly in reality. There really is very little reason to actually use one of these versus any normal display, especially when you have to consider they are way heavier, lower res, have generally smaller screens, and are even less power efficient. Plus, let's not forget the extra hoops you have to jump through to even hook the thing up, which really they aren't too many, but it's still more than normal. I think too, though the small size does make it easy to move around and look almost cartoonishly proportioned, I do kind of wish I had a 14 or 15 inch version just for that little extra screen space. But with all its limitations and impracticality, it is still a fun thing to keep around. I like the idea of having it as a cute decoration that actually has a function. And it is fun to relive my nostalgia and play some old games on it every now and then, or pop in Mario Kart or Tetris when a friend comes over. As for watching stuff on it, well, admittedly it's pretty rare for me since I'd rather just watch stuff on my laptop that can be set up anywhere and is easier to use, and it's hard to argue that the static and fuzziness is superior to the crystal clear and vibrant screens we have today. But still, when the vibe is right and you just want to soak in that little extra aesthetic while you watch shows, it just has a charm to it. It's like viewing the same media but through a slightly different perspective. It may not get used too often, but with how rare these things are today as there's something pretty much nobody wants, I definitely like to keep it around.